All right, so let's go to our first slide. Making sense of cord cutting. So cutting the cord, why do you do it and how do you do it? Uh, so there's number, a number of reasons why you might want to ditch cable or satellite. Uh, for the most part, for everyone, it is saving money. Um, and it also could be that you just don't want all of the hundreds of channels you might get with cable or satellite. Um, and you're looking to just kind of choose the different channels, have something a bit more pared down. Um, and then you wanna just take everything with you wherever you go. And the best part is getting rid of contracts. Um, you don't have any contracts with these types of streaming services. And I'm gonna go over you know, the major streaming services available to you but you don't have contracts with them and that's really one of the best things. And so how do you do it? Um, how you cut the cord is completely your decision. It's, it, it can be complicated and confusing, um, but essentially what you need just to get started, it boils down to the following. You need good Wi-Fi, a streaming service or a streaming device rather, or smart TV and a streaming service or four or five. Uh, for example, a live TV service and a general streaming service like Netflix. Okay, so cutting the cord, the good and the bad. Um, so cutting the cord, uh, streaming services can be very helpful in saving money, streamlining your TV and movie viewing, and even simplifying your life in a small way. Um, but there are downsides to consider. It's something that I, I like to go over um, right away with everybody so that you're aware. Uh, your internet connection. You have to make sure you have strong internet for something like this. Um, I recommend 100 megabytes uh, per second um, or higher. And depending on how many services and streams you have, if, if it's just you and you're going to use one streaming service and you don't have multiple devices out there, maybe you can get away with 50, but I think you're going to have a much smoother experience at 100. Um, and that can get a little pricey, you know, so you, you might have to consider pay, you might have to pay more for internet. And for the most part, for all of us, we're, we're using Optimum and we know how expensive Optimum can be. Um, so that, that is definitely one thing to, to think about. Um, it does require a smart TV or a streaming device like an uh, Amazon Fire TV stick or a Roku, uh, Chromecast, Apple TV, and I'll go over the streaming devices in, the, in a couple of minutes. But it does require some sort of um, device or smart TV. So just a standard TV without an internet connection and without a streaming device isn't going to allow you to have any of these services, unfortunately. Uh, there are limits on how many people can watch at one time. A lot of the times it's two or three streams at one time. Um, for many services that aren't live TV, it, you can share your account with other people who don't live with you. And a lot of people do that. Um, but they might also, you might not be able to watch TV outside of your home uh, just because they don't want you sharing your account. You would have to have an app for that. Not every channel is available from one service, especially regional sports channels. For example, there's no MSG except on one live TV service right now. It used to be on two. Uh, actually, it used to be on three and now it seems to just be on one. Uh, and there's no more numbers. So channels are only listed alphabetically. And when I first gave this, uh, did this program a couple of years ago, that was like the biggest uh, problem people had was just trying to get used to no more two, four, five, seven, or, you know, whatever, you know, certain channels used to be. Um, you don't have any numbers. You just have everything alphabetically. Some services let you sort of favorite channels so that you can easily access them. And that's always helpful, but there's no more numbers. And choices. You have a lot of choices out there, which is a good thing, but that can make it more confusing. And that's probably why you're here. And I'm glad you're here with us. Um, but you do have a lot of choices. And there could be more depending on what service you have. But I wanted to put the bad out there for you. Uh, like I said, it's important that you all know. All right, next slide. So research. I'm a librarian. I love to research. So I'm always going to recommend research everything you do. 
before you buy it. It's just so important, especially for a service like this. Thankfully, you don't have a contract that you're stuck in. Um, so because you don't have a contract, there isn't as much of a risk without doing a ton of research, but I still recommend researching, of course. So for, so for live TV, you want to write down your must-see TV shows and channels so that you can compare for what you need. So, you know, how many shows do you DVR or record? How many hours does that equal, you know, per week or even monthly? Will you need to pay extra so that you can DVR more shows? You know, questions like that, what channels do you watch the most? Um, if you don't watch a lot of like local channels, like if you don't watch CBS or ABC, maybe that's not important to you. Um, but it's definitely, I, I definitely recommend writing down the TV shows that you love, what channels they're on, what channels you watch regularly, and then what you record. Because if you are an avid TV viewer, you don't want to lose out on your favorite show or your favorite channel. Um, be aware of how many people are in your household. Do you need to pay for additional screens? Because like I said, they do limit to how many people can watch at one time. And there are some ways around that. Um, and I'll, I can go over that in a, li a little later. Um, but you have to think about that as well. Uh, how many devices do you use at one time? Do you need to pay more for internet? So like I said, if you're, if you're running under 100 megabytes, that's probably not going to be enough if you're not a single person household. And, and again, even if you are a single person household, 100 is probably the lowest you should go for internet speed. Especially since Optimum says you get 100, you don't actually get 100. So that's just how they work. Um, you might want to consider creating a new budget for yourself so you know where to draw the line on services. You don't want to wind up with five or six services because you're so excited about this and then to find out you're not actually paying any less than you were before. And then use reputable, uh, reputable websites like Consumer Reports, CNET, Engadget, and more. Uh, the two links that I put in the chat are here in the slideshow. And I did, like I said, I also put the PDF of this presentation in the chat as well uh, for anyone to look at. So these two links are really great because they give you reviews on live TV streaming services. And my favorite one is the second CNET link here. What it does is it puts the main streaming services and all of the channels, the main channels you might watch, it lists them all in a chart. So that you can easily see which service has which channels. Um, and I think that that's so useful. And I go back to that all the time, especially when I'm researching this. You know, I, I always try to do that. And so those, again, those links are in the chat. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. I, sorry, I have a question. Sure. So with my system, um, currently I have two smart TVs and one that's not. Okay. So okay. will I need to get a separate antenna for that or do I need to get another cable box from the company that I'm with? So for services like this, if you don't have a smart TV, you need a streaming device like a Fire TV stick or a Roku. Uh, you don't have any cable boxes with any services, um, like live TV streaming services. You would just need to get some sort of device. Um, an antenna would be if you wanted to get local channels and you didn't want to pay for it. Um, you could buy an antenna and put that on the back of your TV, but you wouldn't need a cable box. You would just need, like I said, like a Roku or a Fire TV stick or another smart TV if you wanted to pay for that. But uh, the Fire TV sticks are cheaper, so... Thank you. You're welcome. And we do have, let's see. Oh, so Kim, before I move on, uh, Kim asked, is Optimum the only place to get good Wi-Fi? Uh, honestly, the one thing I have to say about Optimum, they do charge us a lot, but their internet is pretty great. It is considered still one of the best in the country. Um, I think that Verizon, it's hard because most of us are in the town of Brookhaven, I think if you're here, um, and we really still don't have Verizon as an option. I know some people are able to get 
uh, internet from Verizon through their Verizon cell phone plan, but I can't guarantee that that would work for you. Um, so really Optimum is still the only game in town. I'm hoping that will change and we'll get some more competition in the market, but right now Optimum is really your best option. And again, they do actually have great Wi-Fi. Um, you know, we get service outages of course, but they're, they are, I can't say they're fully worth the money, but they're, they're worth the headache because you do get good internet. Yes, so uh, Daniel mentioned here um, that 5G is going to uh, level the playing field. That is the hope, Daniel. I, I do hope that it will kind of fix some issues and, and maybe give us more options for streaming. Um, if you don't know, there's, there's 3G, 4G, 5G, that's data. Um, but 5G is the newest type of data coming out. It's a little bit harder to explain. There's more involved than that but it's going to be incredibly fast um, and might be really helpful. Okay. So live TV streaming versus Netflix, let's say. Um, so before we get into all of your options, it's important to remember there are two different ways to stream TV. Uh, you can do streaming services with no live options or streaming services that have live TV channels. Uh, so, for example, just streaming with no live TV, you have Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, Apple TV+, Plus, HBO Max, and Peacock, and I imagine next year more services will be announced. Um, those are really your, the big ones that are out there right now, and I'm going to get into those later on. So, live TV streaming. You have Hulu Live, and Hulu, just the, the streaming service, comes with Hulu Live. They're, they are sort of two different things. YouTube TV, that's uh, run by Google. AT&T TV Now, Sling TV, and Fubo TV. And those are really your, your main options for live TV streaming. Um, there is one more I'll mention. I just find it a really a great service, but I, it's not really in you know, one of the big ones, so I didn't include it here. Okay, so how do you even stream? <laughs> so we all hear the word streaming on TV multiple times a day. You've just heard me say it probably 20 times, uh, but what is it? So streaming video can be as simple as loading up your browser, going to youtube.com to view an uploaded video, or as complicated as purchasing Netflix and a Fire TV stick, downloading an app to the Fire TV, registering an account, and watching the provided content. Uh, so most likely you're here because you're looking for the second option. So this means you need a streaming device. So I've listed your best options here, and that's what uh, T had asked the question about, you know, what would she need if she wanted to watch TV on her non-smart TV? Uh, you can do a Roku box or a Roku stick. Uh, prices start at $30, and they go up to 100 for 4K. You have Amazon Fire TV stick, and that is roughly $30 to $50 for the stick, uh, and $120 for the Alexa-enabled TV cube, which I don't recommend spending that money on. Frankly, it's not worth it. Um, your Apple TV, if you're a really big Apple user, you know, your whole life revolves around your Apple devices, you might want to consider an Apple TV uh, just because it might work better for you. It's $149 for HD and 179 to 199 for 4K. And it is for Apple users only. You do have to have an Apple account. Uh, Google Chromecast, it, that is a device that, you know, you just put it right into your HDMI port on the side of your TV. You don't necessarily need a remote. You really just need your phone and that can control it. But they are making Chromecasts that are a little bit more money now that do come with remotes. And I think they're calling it Google TV. But it starts at $30 and it does require the app on your mobile device, but the app is available for all mobile devices, including Apple. Uh, a smart TV. Prices range from $150 to the low thousands, depending on what you're getting. Uh, right now, there are some good deals out there if you're interested in a smart TV. Um, reliable brands for me are Samsung and Vizio. Uh, LG is pretty good as well. Uh, Roku has their own brand of TVs. I've heard good things and bad things depending on the reviews, but this is where it's so important, especially if you're looking to buy a smart TV, is to really read the reviews. It's one thing to go on Consumer Reports and see what they say. I go on to maybe three different websites and maybe I over-research, but 
And I like to read the reviews from the actual consumers, the people who have purchased the TV or any device and have actually used it. Um, just to see what they have to say, you know, six months in, one year in, how is it really working? So I always recommend reading reviews. I go to Best Buy, Amazon, um, Costco actually, because uh, sometimes you can get really good deals at Costco. Places like that just to read reviews, Target as well. Um, and I can't stress this enough, <laughs> strong, stable Wi-Fi connection. Um, I'm not gonna go over it again. I think I've said it twice already, but it's very important. Does anyone have a question? Okay. All right. So we're going to go into your main options for live TV. So let's look at the most relevant streaming services for you. Um, so like I said before, please note that all of these services can only be used in one location unless you're using their mobile app. And this is where I'm going to mention, there is a minor workaround around some of this. If you do have any sort of live TV subscription, whether that be through one of these services or even through Optimum or DirecTV um, or any sort of satellite, what you can do and this helps get around the amount of um, devices you can have at one time streaming, you can download, say, the NBC app onto your mobile device and possibly, or, I mean, onto your, your streaming stick and possibly onto your smart TV. Sign in with the credentials for your TV service and you're able to watch that way. And that helps get around that, you know, two or three devices at one time. So that's just a little tip. So let's go over the two biggest streaming services in the game right now. It's Hulu with live TV and YouTube TV. So Hulu with live TV, it comes with Hulu's main streaming service. And when I say streaming service, I'll, I'll get into it more later, but Hulu has always been a really great place to go for TV lovers. For about $13 a month for no ads, you have access to the majority of TV shows that are out there. Um, a lot of times they show up the next day that they've aired on TV, usually around 5 a.m., I think is the time, Eastern time, that Hulu uh, goes with for a lot of those episodes. So some people might find that just Hulu is enough for them and they pay $13 a month for it and they don't have any commercials and that's the best part, <laughs> is no commercials. Um, so right now, let's see here, I'm trying to get the chat to show up. Okay, so Hulu is $65 for commercials um, with non-live TV, um, and then $70 for no commercials with non-live TV. Obviously, live TV, as you're watching it, will always have commercials, it just can't get around that. Um, but it's 65 plus channels, and you can pay extra for add-ons. So that would be uh, two screens at a time, um, but you can pay for unlimited screens. 50 hours of DVD, but you can pay for 200 hours and you're starting to see where they get you. Um, and then they call it enhanced DVR. You can bundle with Hulu unlimited screens and enhanced DVR for $5 less than you would if you just got both of them separately. Uh, you can create separate profiles for everybody and then you can pay extra to add premium channels like HBO, Stars, and Showtime. Okay. I'm trying to get our chat to show up. So just bear with me for one moment. I apologize, we're having minor technical difficulties. I just wanna make sure I can get the chat to show up. Oh yes, okay, so Kim mentioned IMDB TV. Uh, and I'll, you know, I'll mention that later, Kim, thank you. All right, let's go back. Okay. So after Hulu with live TV, uh, you have YouTube TV. Now YouTube is owned by Google, so this does come from Google. Um, YouTube TV is $65 a month with about 85 channels. It has unlimited DVR, up to three streams at a time, and many of the same channels as Hulu, but not all. And that's where that second link I gave you in the chat is really handy, that chart with all of the different channels that are available for each service. You can create up to six separate profiles for YouTube TV, and you can pay extra for add-on channels, including premium channels. Add-on channels have a tendency to be um, sports networks, NBC network, NHL, MLB, things like that. 
Uh, one thing I definitely will mention is um, live TV streaming. It isn't great for sports fans. <laughs> uh, I can tell you from experience. Um, I actually subscribe personally to Hulu with live TV. The Yes Network just got taken off Hulu with live TV. I, when baseball does come back, I don't really know what I'm going to do because I'm a big Yankees fan, but I'll figure it out. Hopefully it'll come back by then. Um, YouTube TV is one of the streaming services that does consistently add new channels, but then sometimes it also takes them away and it doesn't necessarily tell you when it does either of those things. And that can be frustrating for users. You might find that a channel that you watched is no longer there. Um, sometimes you get pleading emails from the company saying, you know, please email, like for example, Hulu sent an email out to its users and said, you know, we're not able to negotiate with the Sinclair Group, which owns the Yes Network. Um, you know, please email them and tell them to keep Yes Network on Hulu. Um, so you might find that as well. And those commercials used to show up on Optimum when they were having negotiations with other networks and you're still gonna get emails. <laughs> it's just the game that gets played with TV. Okay, so you have some other options. You've probably all heard of Sling TV. You've seen the slightly suggestive ads. Um, Sling TV is very interesting. It uh, has two separate packages and it's $30 a month for each or you can bundle those packages at $45 a month. And you do get a, a decent channel lineup from them. Uh, Cloud DVR is an additional $5 a month, uh, which is a little frustrating. I personally think it should just come with basic cloud DVR. Um, various add-ons range from $5 to $10 a month, and that includes comedy, news, sports. They put them into little categories. So comedy might be Comedy Central. Um, it might be like Paramount. It could be all sorts of channels. And there are very few to none, to no local channels on uh, Sling. Uh, users are actually encouraged by Sling to purchase an antenna, and a lot of times they offer a deal where if you purchase Sling TV, you get a free antenna. Um, the antenna, you know, I'm not thinking of like the bunny ears. I'm thinking of, you know, you're not thinking of like the piece of metal that went on top of your TV. It's not like that anymore. The antennae now are uh, definitely better. Um, they have a wider range. They're more stable. But because we live on Long Island, we have a tendency to get uh, Connecticut channels. So that's something to keep in mind too. If you're someone looking to go for an antenna for your local channels, you might wind up getting C uh, Connecticut news. You might not necessarily get uh, New York or Long Island news at all, actually. Um, an antenna, you know, it can be really helpful to you. It's, it's, you have to pay for the antenna, but you don't have to pay for the service itself. So you are getting TV essentially for free but you can't record anything. So that's something to keep in mind too. And you're at the will of the weather. Uh, it's the same thing with satellite. So with Sling TV, it's available for all devices and you can do up to two streams at a time. Uh, so AT&T Now, which is formerly DirecTV Now, AT&T owns DirecTV, also owns Warner Brothers, AT&T owns a lot. Um, and then one thing I want to mention, Hulu is owned 60% by Disney. So just want to throw that out there because you might see Disney bundles. Okay. Let's see, we have a question. Let's see if I can answer. Yes. Yes, so Daniel said Amazon's DVR records for you. Amazon does have um, their own box. I, I don't often mention it because it's very expensive. Um, but yeah, it, it can run, it, it runs, I think, it used to run about 200, 250. I think they've come down in price, um, but it is an option for you. Uh, they do have it so that you can record from an antenna. Okay, so AT&T now. AT&T now is $55 a month for 45 channels, $80 for 60 channels, and HBO is included in the $80 package. AT&T now to me is the, the live um, TV streaming service that is most like cable. They have so many different packages that it just becomes way too overwhelming, um, but it might be something for you to think about. Uh, there's no Viacom channel, so channels like A&E, Animal Planet, 
um, aren't available to you. It does have MSG in yes, but only in the $80 package. And then just for the Mets fans out there, if, if you are out there tonight, um, they, they all have SNY. So if that helps as well. So for at and now, it's up to three streams at a time, 500 hours of DVR that deletes after 90 days if they're unwatched or watched. It's available for all devices. And you can go to a particular website for local channels. Um, at and in my experience, is a service that does change their channels and packages more often than providers, than other providers, rather. Um, I don't know why. They just have a tendency to lose and gain more frequently. Um, something to think about with at and now, sometimes the at and the wireless service for your cell phone, does have really good deals where it might offer you a discount or even a one free year of at and now. So that's something to think about if you're looking to switch over to live TV streaming. Um, that might be something that could work for you. Let's see. Okay. All right, so Fubo TV is might might not be something you've heard about, but it's a decent option. Fubo TV is the street the streaming service for sports fans. Um, it's right now it's running a really good bundle. Uh, the prices might change, so what I'm saying in this in this presentation could be moot in a month. Hopefully not, but we'll see. Um, so right now, Fubo TV is $65 a month with two simultaneous streams and tons of channels. I'm shocked at how many channels they have sometimes. Like I said, it's excellent for sports fans. It does have all of the MSG channels, does not have Yes Network. Um, it does have all of the ESPNs and Fox Sports networks you could possibly imagine, um, and tons of college uh, sports as well. Um, it is 250 hours of DVR, which is quite a lot. Uh, three screens at a time, which actually contradicts the two simultaneous streams, but I think right now their deal includes three screens. It used to be two. And then it works on all devices. And now before I get to the last one, I do want to mention um, price changes. I started Hulu at $55 a month. I am now paying $71 a month. Um, and that's not even with add-ons. And I started Hulu with live TV not even two years ago. So there, there are price jumps, just like you see price increases with Optimum with, with, your, with your satellite or cable, you're, unfortunately you're going to see them with your streaming services. Um, I was really disappointed actually to find out that Hulu upped its, its prices by $10 because I just had a price increase probably less than a year ago, I wanna say. So 2020 has sort of warped my sense of time, so I can't say for sure if it was less than a year ago. But it was disappointing, especially since it didn't, Hulu didn't tell me what I was gaining. It took away the Yes Network, which I watched regularly, but it didn't say, oh, but you're also gaining these great channels, or you're gaining these, you know, great services, or we're offering you enhanced DVR for no extra cost. You know, they're not necessarily giving you, they're just increasing your, your costs. And that's something to think about. Keep it in the back of your mind. You might find that you're grandfathered into a really nice contract with your current cable or satellite provider, and that when you start doing the math for all of these services, it just doesn't pay to switch. You might be more comfortable with what you have. But again, that's why you've come to programs like this, because it's free. You don't have to pay anyone to tell you this information, and you don't have to worry about having about 15 different tabs open, because that's what I'm for. I do often have 15 different tabs open at one time. It's research. <laughs> and the last one here for live TV streaming is Philo TV. This was actually a streaming service created for college students. And I find that really interesting. Um, it's actually really cool. It's $20 for 58 channels and they have some really great channel options. There's no local or sports channels, but again, this was made for college students, just wasn't something that they necessarily needed. It's three simultaneous streams, unlimited DVR that saves for up to 30 days, and it's available on pretty much all of the major devices. So if you don't watch network TV, if you don't watch sports, this might be something that works for you for $20 a month. It's, I haven't seen the price go up since I've started doing these programs, and I do them about twice a year because it changes so much. Um, 
and twenty dollars a month is been pretty consistent. So I'm not sure how they're making it work, but they are. So I'm going to just exit my presentation for a second, and I just want to show you. Um, hopefully, you can still see my screen. I just want to show you what the websites look like for the services that I mentioned. So right now, this is Hulu with live TV. Um, Hulu makes it really clear to find your channels and different add-ons. Okay. Uh, so, you know, if you go to channels here, it says view channels in your area. And again, that's something to um, always look for is to enter your zip code. So I'm going to do Selden because I'm currently in our Selden building. And if you're wondering what my background is, if you can see me, I'm not sure if everyone can see me, but if you can see me, my background is the kitchen from the show, The Great British Bake Off, or The Great British Baking Show here in the United States. Um, it's on Netflix, which I'll, I'll get to later. So once you put in your zip code, you have the opportunity to see what's available to you, live local channels, entertainment and lifestyle channels, and you, know, you can look through and see what you watch, movie channels, news. They, they do break it up really nicely. And then the add-ons is where you start paying. So at least you can see right away what's available to you. Oh, so Tara, Hallmark is... So Tara said that she's been looking, but she hasn't found the Hallmark channel on streaming services. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is on Fubo, but let me go to my handy little CNET link and we'll take a look at that. So this is the chart I was telling you all about. Let's see, Hallmark is on. What have we got? Hallmark is on Philo, which was always surprising. That's $20, Sling. And it is on Fubo. And yeah, and that's it. <laughs> so yeah, so it's on more than it used to be, which is good. Um, and I believe Fubo TV even has different variations of the Hallmark Channel. So that's something to, to take a look at for yourself. But it isn't on YouTube TV and Hulu, which it's weird because it's the two. Oh no. Okay, so hopefully you're all still with me. Um, there is a chance my Zoom <laughs> just froze. Still see and hear you. Okay, um, that's good. <laughs> Can you see my screen or? Yeah, you're on the AT and T. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So I'm gonna I'm going to keep going. I might not be able to access the chat because um, it is slightly frozen on my end, but I am gonna keep going. <laughs> Okay. So this is the YouTube TV website, just so you can get a sense of what it looks like. You can see channels. And I'm gonna close the tabs. There we go, okay. Um, this is Fubo TV. And again, it, it lists, it actually detects my location um, and it lists everything that's available. It's it's a very intense to look at, so I suggest going by the different categories. Sling TV is the one I sometimes have the most difficulty in finding information for because they don't always make everything really obvious, and I think that that's intentional. But you can kind of see there's um, Sling and free local channels because they're giving you an antenna, a TiVo stream. So there's all sorts of deals available. And then AT&T TV now.
you can see here, um, packages is what I was mentioning before. And there's plus and max, but they have other packages. And this is how I was saying, if you look, it's just $93, 110. I mean, if you look to see the prices, you might as well just stick with, with cable with what you have. And then this is Philo TV. 63 channels, $20 a month. And there you go. And most of the most of the websites are thankfully pretty easy to navigate. Sling's the only one I always I have trouble with, but you might be fine. All right, just want to make sure you're all still with me. Like I said, I can't see the chat and Zoom is still being a little weird. I apologize for the technical difficulties. Okay. Um, if you can hear me, what I am going to do is close the Zoom and then I'm going to go right back into it. I'll be right back. I'm so sorry. Okay, I think we're back, <laughs> or at least I'm back. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go right back to where I was. I apologize for the, for the issues I was having. This is the issue with technology. Um, you just saw in live what can happen with someone who works with computers for a living and has been for 16 years uh, can run into any technical difficulties. Um, and so this is something to think about as well. Uh, there might be buffering, there might be down times uh, that you might not necessarily get with cable or satellite. But thank you for sticking with me while I went through that. <laughs> it's more frustrating on my end, I think. Okay, so other things to mention here. So I showed you just the websites and um, the TV streaming services. So we have, there are certain channels that are unavailable on any streaming service. Uh, PBS is only available through YouTube TV. Because PBS is public TV, it, it is a little bit difficult to find it on a live TV streaming service. So that's something to think about. Uh, you might lose access to live PBS. If you're a PBS viewer, that might make or break your decision. One thing to mention though with PBS, it has something called PBS Passport. And for a donation of say like 25 to $50 a year, you have access to PBS Passport, which gives you unlimited um, content essentially. You don't have live TV, but you have access to any TV show that's on PBS and all of the episodes that are there. So I pay for it just to support PBS, but also I do find it really helpful since I don't have access to PBS. News 12 is only available to Optimum subscribers, so you won't have it on any of your live TV streaming services. The Weather Channel is only available on a couple of services. Um, it's not available on Hulu. It is available on YouTube TV. It's a channel that I think is starting to get onto the live TV streaming services, but for a couple of years there, it wasn't on any actually. So something to think about as you're, as you're researching. And there are a few free options out there. The TV channels are a little bit limited, but it might be worth thinking about. So you have um, Pluto TV, which is probably the most well-known, um, and it's got a really decent lineup. You have Tubi TV and Lowcast. Lowcast, I mentioned, but whether it's going to stick around for a little while, I'm not sure. Some of the networks kind of go after it because it's 
it's not quite pirating, but it's it's like in that gray area of is it legal, is it not legal? So that's up to you. Um, and then before, I think Kim had mentioned IMDb TV. IMDb TV is found on any Amazon device. It is completely free and it does have some really great movie and TV options. Just be aware that these free options always have ads. So if you don't like commercials, like really, really don't like commercials, you might not want one of these, but they're free. So it might also be worth it. Okay. Uh, something else to mention, uh, some services don't allow you to forward or rewind during live TV, um, but they might let you do this if you pay more for better DVR. And then some service, services are starting to offer this without paying more like YouTube TV. Um, so when researching services, maybe that might be something you wanna look into. Uh, but all services with DVR will allow you to forward and rewind while you're watching or recording. That never used to be the case. AT&T TV now used to be direct TV. Now you couldn't forward through the recordings, which I thought was crazy. Okay, so every service is different and every service will have its annoyances like all technology. Uh, so just try to stay patient and do your best and learn as you go. Um, you saw an annoyance that I just dealt with right now. <laughs> Um, so there will be buffering, freezing, downtime, and a learning curve for some users. All right, so now we're moving on to our no live TV option. This one, I, this tends to go faster. And so once I'm done, if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Okay, so cutting the cord streaming services. Uh, so in addition to live TV streaming, you can purchase subscriptions to services that don't offer live TV. They provide movies, TV, and a lot of original content, and for a generally low monthly price, and few or no commercials. Um, also included in the streaming services are premium, premium channels like HBO and Showtime. So let's go for the big three. Um, so that includes Netflix, which just announced a price hike. So there's another price increase for Netflix users. Um, so you have $9 for basic, which is one screen at a time, $14 for standard, which is two screens, and $17 for premium, which is four screens. I believe they're raising premium to uh, $18 a month. It is just $1, but it's frustrating because they did just increase their prices last year. Uh, Netflix, I have been a Netflix user since DVDs, which is a weird thing to say, but here we are. Um, so Netflix has a lot of original content. Um, I will always keep my Netflix subscription just because there's so much on there that I watch. Like I said, my background should be Great British Bake Off. That used to be a PBS exclusive show. They switched channels and production in England and they became a Netflix exclusive show. Um, it's my most calming show. It just like immediately makes me feel better, puts me in a good mood. So I will keep it for that. <laughs> Um, but there is a lot of great, great content on Netflix. Um, Amazon Prime Video, it comes with Amazon Prime. So if you have Amazon Prime and you're not using Amazon Prime Video, you're missing out on something you're paying for. Uh, same thing with Prime Music and Prime Photos. You can do, you have unlimited photo storage if you have an Amazon Prime account, just in case you didn't know. Uh, so it's $13 a month or $119 a year or $9 a month for just Prime Video. Whether it's worth paying $9 a month for Prime Video, I, I don't really know. Um, but they do have some really great original content, some uh, good movie and TV options. One of my favorite shows is The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. That's on Amazon Prime. If you haven't watched it and you have Amazon Prime, I highly recommend it. Um, Hulu uh, is $6 a month for commercials and $12 a month with no commercials. Um, so that's what I was mentioning before. Hulu has live TV, but uh, Hulu just has its basic streaming platform uh, where you have access to TV shows the next day or, uh, you know, all sorts of movies as well as Hulu's original content like The Handmaid's Tale. Um, again, I've been a Hulu user probably for about four or five years now. And um, I... I, I do enjoy it. I don't enjoy the price increases, but I do like Hulu. <laughs> Lisa is asking me, what is my favorite Netflix show again? Um, that would be The Great British Bake Off. It's also called The Great British Baking Show um, here in the United States. Um, 
it's it's really just very polite British people competing to be the best baker, but something about it is just really nice. <laughs> very, very pleasant. Everyone is so nice to one another and you don't always see that. So that's one of the reasons I love it. Um, also on Netflix, one of my favorite shows is The West Wing. Um, if you've never seen The West Wing, it's all on Netflix, it's really great. Um, I could honestly sit here for two hours and give you TV recommendations. I'm not going to do that, but I could. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about premium and other channels. HBO Max. HBO Max launched this year after a ton of fanfare. It's $15 a month. It is not available on Roku devices, but it is finally available on Amazon Fire TV sticks. Uh, for several months, HBO would not allow um, its service to be on the Amazon Fire TV stick. And that's something I think we're gonna see more of as new services come out. Um, Amazon is huge, as you all know, they make a ton of money. They're very difficult to work with. Um, for, for many years, Google and Amazon would not get along where you, you couldn't have any Google products listed on Amazon and Google would not even consider negotiating with Amazon. So these really, really large giant uh, corporations fighting with one another and then we're the ones that have to deal with that. But HBO Max is on the Fire TV stick. It is not yet on the Roku. It does have a lot of content and they just recently announced that all of their major Warner Brothers pictures coming out next year in theaters are also going to be streaming same day for about 30 days on HBO Max. Those are brand new movies that you would have to pay for in theaters for $15 a month. Uh, movies like Dune are going to be on there, In the Heights, which is um, a movie that's based on a Broadway musical by Lin-Manuel Miranda. He wrote uh, Hamilton. Um, so you might be interested in that. And I think Mortal Kombat is also going to be on there and the new Space Jam, um, among other movies. Wonder Woman 1984 is going to be on the HBO Max platform on Christmas Day, which is very exciting. Um, other premium channels, Showtime, $11 a month, Stars Direct, $9 a month, CBS All Access is $6 a month uh, with commercials and $10 for no commercials. So CBS All Access is CBS's own streaming platform, which gives you original content, but also access to all of CBS's um, shows and sports. Um, it's, it might be worth the money for you if you're a CBS viewer. I, I know I pay for $6 a month because they were showing um, the National Women's Soccer League. So, and they would only show that there. So T, so, so T asks, can you get HBO Max on a smart TV only? No, you can get it on your smart TV, but you can also get it on a Fire TV stick and any mobile device. It's just not available on a Roku yet, but as of today, they are having productive talks. That's all I know. Okay. So all of the channels I just mentioned can be added to an Amazon Prime subscription. Um, and then HBO, Showtime, and Stars can be added to most live TV streaming services as well. If you wanted to bundle and have them in one place, I don't uh, necessarily recommend that. Seth, did you have a question? Yeah, just to point out, um, FIO started rebroadcasting News 12 earlier this year. Oh, awesome. And I found out that with HBO Max, if you have an existing HBO, they're not charging you the $14.95 a month fee. Yes. So I thought I would pass that along. Yes, thank you. For, I did not mention that. Thank you for pointing that out. So I didn't know that about Fios. So that's great for Fios users. Um, and yes, if you are already paying for HBO, you're automatically upgraded to HBO Max, which is great. They have tons of content. My favorite show of all time is on HBO Max. That show is Doctor Who. Um, so that's something I recommend watching. But Friends is also on there if you're a big Friends fan. Okay, so other channels. You have Peacock, which is NBC's own network. That's their streaming service. It's free with ads and for the basics. Um, I have a Peacock account. Uh, Peacock is not available on an Amazon Fire TV stick or some smart TVs. It is available on a Roku. Um, I do have Peacock. I do have a Roku. Um, I watch Parks and Rec on it all the time. 
uh, and it's with ads, but I find that their ads are not annoying. It's not even, I mean, sometimes they're a minute and a half and sometimes you only get one ad break and you're not paying for that. Um, they do have a premium with $5 a month and that just gives you extra content, but there are ads even with that content. And then there's a plus version for $10 a month, which is all of the content on the free and premium platforms, but with no commercials. To me, I think Peacock might just be worth it for anyone because it's free. Uh, Disney Plus is huge right now. Um, Disney Plus was $7 a month. They just announced over the weekend that it's now going up a dollar, $8 a month. It's still very reasonable. Um, and again, I had finished this presentation. I updated it on Friday. Had to go into work uh, yesterday and update it again because of Disney's changes. <laughs> so this is how quickly it, it moves. Um, at half of what I'm going to put in this presentation today could be outdated in another six months. Um, Disney Plus has old and new Disney movies and TV like Lizzie McGuire. Um, and you can also bundle Disney Plus, Hulu, the main streaming platform, and ESPN Plus for $12 a month, which is probably a really good deal. Um, and I believe the Hulu is commercials. Um, ESPN Plus is great if you're a sports fan. Um, just so that you're aware, the reason you can have that bundle is because Disney owns 60% um, of Hulu, it owns ESPN, and it owns ABC, in case you didn't know that about, uh, about Disney. And Kim says, and Disney Plus has Baby Yoda. It does have The Mandalorian, which is a really, really great Star Wars TV show. And then you have Apple TV Plus. It's $5 a month. It has a lot of original content. It has other movies, um, other TV shows. I don't personally subscribe to Apple TV Plus. It's one of the only ones I don't subscribe to. Um, I just not necessarily interested in the content they have. Um, but for the price, if you like Apple, uh, maybe this is something worth subscribing to or at least looking into to see if some of the shows sound good. Um, another thing to mention, a lot of these TV shows don't generally come out on DVD. The really popular ones do. Um, but for example, Stranger Things on Netflix, it took a long time to get it out on DVD properly that the library could even purchase it. It wasn't published in a way where we could purchase it for our collection. Uh, you had to purchase it directly through Target. It was like a Target exclusive when Stranger Things got released. And that's a Netflix streaming show, also really great. Um, Netflix, in my opinion, has the best original content out of all of these streaming services. Um, just because they have so much of it and they invest so much into it. They also tend to cancel very early though, which I don't like, but. One quick thing about Apple TV. Yeah. Um, I bought a new Apple Watch mm -hmm. and you can get Apple TV for free for a year. So sometimes when you buy an Apple product. Yes. You get that. Yes, that's true. And you Other, can it on yeah. Roku. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Apple TV is available. Uh, it, it's on all streaming pl uh, devices. It's just uh, Peacock and HBO Max that aren't available everywhere, uh, which is frustrating. Um, and thank you, Kim, for reminding me of that. With some of these companies like Apple, AT&T, things like that, um, Sling TV sometimes has deals if you have Comcast, which I don't know if really anyone on Long Island has Comcast, because um, Comcast owns Sling TV. It's always something to be mindful of. A lot of these maybe smaller seeming um, companies or channels generally are owned by really large corporations. Um, so sometimes you can get deals based on that. Okay. So basically what I have here uh, for the streaming services, is what I already covered, which is basically what um, they tend to offer for you. I don't think there's anything too different here. Um, one thing with Netflix, there's no HBO, Stars, or Showtime TV shows. Um, it's just sort of the way Netflix uh, functions and sort of always has. Uh, they do have current TV shows, but Netflix doesn't get, really get them right away. It usually can take two to three months or more. Um, shows on like a channel like The CW, which is a lot of teen shows, but has a really great uh, superhero shows. Um, sometimes they get those within less than a month of them finishing uh, their seasons. 
Okay, let's see. Oh, Netflix does have Grey's Anatomy too. Um, and this is pretty much just the same thing I was saying. HBO Max also has um, a lot of Turner Classic movies, which if you're a fan of classic film, it might be really fun to sort of relive that. Um, and then with Disney Plus, a little caveat, they have a lot of great content. Um, sometimes they've been known to edit PG-13 movies so that they're more kid friendly. It doesn't happen a lot. They got called out for it. I think they might have stopped doing it, but that's something to think about as well. Uh, there might be some PG-13 on there that aren't kid friendly and there might be some edits. Any questions on uh, the services I just went over? Anything I can clarify for you? Okay. I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention to you uh, the library streaming services that you have access to with your library card. Um, we have three really great streaming services, completely free, of course. Um, we have something called Canopy with a K. And Canopy has movies, documentaries, foreign films, and independent films. You can stream up to 10 a month. It is available on your Roku. It's available on your Fire TV stick. It might even be available on smart TVs now. Um, Canopy, you just have to make an account for Canopy uh, with your library card number. And that's something I, I kind of didn't mention here. I might have made the assumption, but all of these services, obviously you have to make an account. You have to have an email address and a password. And it's the same thing with, with any of these library streaming services. Uh, Canopy has a really decent selection, particularly of documentaries and foreign and classic films, uh, but sometimes they surprise me with their picks. Um, I've seen a lot of great movies from Canopy. Hoopla, which you might have heard of if you're a library user, has movies, indies, TV shows, and even some great British titles, and you can stream up to 15 titles a month. If you do TV shows with Hoopla, each episode counts as one stream. So if there's 10 episodes, that's 10 streams. And again, Hoopla, you have to make an account for, but it, and it is available for you on your um, Fire TV stick, your Roku, your smart TV. It's, it's great. Um, also on Hoopla, of course, they have streaming music, ebooks, and audiobooks, and awesome graphic novel co uh, collection. RB Digital has access to Acorn TV, which is a British streaming service, and it's available for free with an RB Digital account. You get unlimited streaming for a week, and you can just keep checking it out every week. Um, let's see, we have a question. Yes, Lisa. So I'm going to put the file in the chat. So I just put a PDF of this presentation in the chat. Hopefully you're able to access it. Um, if not, I should be able to email it to you if you want. If you can see the presentation um, at the very bottom there, um, you can email me. Uh, my email is right there, but I'll type it in the chat as well if you can't access the PDF. So Donna. Um, do you know how much optimum is for Wi-Fi only? That depends on if you're a new customer. Um, I'm just going to let you know, I pay $54 a month for 300 megabytes. Actually a pretty decent deal. Um, to me, it's worth it. I do a lot of streaming, obviously. Um, but I also have smart devices in my house. I have my laptop, my cell phone, my tablet, all of that. Um, so 300 is worth it for me. Uh, you could potentially pay less for, you know, 100 or 200. I'm sure next year, once my year is up with Optimum for being a new customer, my price will increase. Um, but let's just take a look while we're while we're here screen sharing. Let's go to Optimum's website. You're welcome. So let's see. So for just internet. So right now they're running a deal, $55 a month. Um, 
but a lot of times with optimum to view offers you do have to put in your street address any tips to get optimum to lower your price for wi-fi uh <laughs> well i i have spent many years listening to my dad threaten to leave uh, optimum and go somewhere else <laughs> but i don't know if um that is always an option uh, i mean you could you could genuinely just call optimum and say i've been a loyal customer for this many years are you doing any deals i feel like i'm paying too much for internet um and you could see what they could offer you uh they do unfortunately know that for internet they are one of the only games again in town um so and that that can be a little bit frustrating Oh, and so Daniel made a good point um, here that, uh, let's see, let me go back. Throughput limit from your cable provider matters. Um, and when he says throughput, I imagine, Daniel, you're just meaning that the what is going through and what's streaming um, from your service that they might actually limit on how much can get through at one time. Um, it's also called throttling. If I'm, if I'm, thinking I'm understanding throughput correctly, but yeah, gigs used. Um, so what will happen is sometimes your internet provider, based on how much internet and what how much you're using at one time, they might um, limit and they might, your, your connection might start uh, going slower until it resets. Um, it does happen, it does happen with Optimum um, occasionally, but not noticeably for me, and I do use quite a lot of internet, but I am the only person living in my home. So, <laughs> um, so it, also to Jessica, I wish I had a better answer for you. Sometimes it's threatening. Sometimes it's hoping you get that really nice customer service representative who's just wants to make you happy. Um, you know, I, I think, I, I think most people are probably paying 60 to $70 a month for just internet, maybe a little bit less if you can get a good deal. Um, sometimes you can just keep calling them and say, hey, I want to keep paying $54. What can you do for me? And, and just see what they have to say. It can't necessarily hurt to ask, um, but I, I wish I had a better answer for you in terms of internet. We just don't have great options. I keep hoping Google has their own um, Wi-Fi uh, called Google Fi, and I keep hoping they're going to come out here, but they tend to be starting in more rural areas who are more in need of uh, fast internet than we are on Long Island, um, but maybe one day, <laughs> maybe one day. And I keep waiting for T-Mobile to come out with their own Wi-Fi network because they feel like they're getting closer. Um, does anyone have any other questions for me? waiting to see. Yeah. Yeah. So what Daniel's saying is that um, gigabytes used per month matters. Uh, cable providers will charge you if you go over. That can be true. I haven't found, found that that's happened to me. Um, it happens a lot with wireless providers. If you go over your data, for sure, they will charge you. All right. Oh, of course, Kim, you're very welcome. Um, I'm, I, I, like I said, I could spend like three hours on here with you guys just talking to you about TV. It's probably not the healthiest thing to do with my time, but <laughs> oh, thank you, T. Yeah, so Lisa, that is a really good point. Just to anyone who's still here, Lisa made a really good point. Getting used to this versus channel surfing. You can't channel surf in the same way anymore if you go to a live TV streaming service. You're welcome, Jessica. Um, so just as everyone's going, that's something else to think about. You can do it, but it's not nearly as easy, which might actually be a good thing. You might have to actually decide on what you want to watch. It's good for me because I'm a very indecisive person. But Lisa, I, I think you can get used to it. It just, it, there is a learning curve and there's an adjustment period for sure. <laughs> 